Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another video. It's another all new news round that we've got in store for you today. We've got news regarding Kurt Zuma finally completing his move to West Ham. We've also got news of an Arsenal player that's leaving the club or on the verge of leaving the club. We're rounding up yesterday's Premier League action as well. And we're also talking about European competitions. All that to come. But before we go any further, I would like to remind you to please like the video and also subscribe for new both things are always and forever be greatly appreciated. But for now, let's get back to talking about some of the biggest news headlines from the world of football. Kicking off with the confirmation regarding Kurt Zuma's move to West Ham. Yeah, we're diving headfirst into the news, into the news that Kurt Zuma has finally completed his move from Chelsea to West Ham. We talked about this move a few times across this transfer window already, but it's a transfer that has finally been confirmed, finally got over the line, and uh, West Ham have finally landed their target. They finally brought in the centre-back that they wanted. Uh, it is believed that Zuma has signed for a fee believed to be in the region of £30 million, and he signed a four-year deal at the London Stadium. Uh, this was a strange move in the sense that this was on again, off again, on again this week. It was on and off throughout the entirety of this week in the space of a couple of days. But finally, everything has been completed, everything has been signed, and West Ham, like I say, have finally landed their target. A good move for Zuma. David Moy seems to be building a pretty decent squad down there. Uh, at West Ham and he's obviously going to get more first team opportunities than he would if he'd have stayed at the Blues and now speaking of the Blues, speaking of Chelsea, now that they've finally got the Kurt Zuma deal all tied up and he's out the door at Stamford Bridge, they can focus on incomings and mainly what they see as being an upgrade on Zuma in the form of obviously Jules Kunde who obviously has been a story that has been floating around a lot during this transfer window. This seems now that this has possibly been given the green light following Zuma's departure. So it seems that it's only imminent that this move will happen and Jules Kunde will soon become an official Chelsea player in the remaining days of this transfer window. The Zuma deal was what they were waiting on. West Ham have finally got their target. Kurt Zuma's officially moved to West Ham. And now it seems only a matter of time before Jules Koundé becomes an official Chelsea player. Next, we're moving on to Arsenal. And we will talk a little bit later on in this video about their problems on the pitch. But off the pitch, Arsenal have parted ways with one of their players in the form of, of uh, Willian. The deal isn't complete yet, but it is on the verge of being completed. It's more, it's looking likely that this deal will be tied up within the next 24 to 48 hours or so. Pretty much, to sum it up, the move hasn't exactly worked out. William to Arsenal over the past year. He signed, obviously, last year on a free transfer from Chelsea, on a three-year deal with the club, and his wages were pretty hefty, to say the least. And there was a bit of a worry that he wouldn't he would see out his contract with the gunners he would see out his contract with the gunners and it would obviously cost them a lot of money but of course that's the hole that arsenal dug themselves in when completing this move over the past few days or so negotiations have taken place between arsenal and brazilian club corinthians and it seems that william is prepared to tear up his contract at the emirates stadium and join the brazilian club a return home to Brazil is obviously uh, what William clearly wants to do, clearly wants to obviously uh, do this. And obviously in doing so, it will be a massive favour to Arsenal in him saving the club a lot of money by just simply tearing up his contract and moving out on a free transfer. Fair play to William for doing this. A lot of players in his position with the kind of wages that he was on would have been happy to just collect their paycheck week after week. But he's tearing up his contract. Um, reportedly, he's even taking a pay cut when he returns to Brazil. So fair play to him. As for Arsenal, things are not looking great on the pitch right now. But shifting Willian out of the club, off the wage bill, much by his own accord, of course, but it's still happening, is at very least 
a small piece of good and positive news that the club need right now. Next up, we're talking about yesterday's Premier League action and we're kicking things off with yesterday's evening fixture that saw Liverpool take on Chelsea. Viewed as a clash between two of the top contenders uh, for this season's Premier League title, it ended up being a 1-1 draw in the end. Kai Havertz putting Chelsea ahead in the first half before Rhys James was judged to have handled the ball on the goal line, resulting in the referee awarding Liverpool a penalty, which Mohamed Salah stepped up to convert from 12 yards. Liverpool dominated possession in the second half, but Chelsea stood firm, they stood resolute and put in a very solid defensive display to grind out a point in the end. Before the game, I think if you asked both sides if they would take a point, I think they both would have took it. But upon reflection, Liverpool will feel that this is two points dropped given how they were had the man advantage for a whole half of football. But uh, like I say, Chelsea managed to grind out a result in the end to frustrate Liverpool. But this isn't the end of the world. It is just frustrating that Liverpool couldn't get a winner in this game, having had the man advantage for 45 minutes. Whilst also, you know, credit to Chelsea, full praise to Chelsea. They put in a very solid, disciplined and stubborn defensive performance in this fixture. And of course, it came out with a well-earned point in the end. Also, in Saturday's lunchtime fixture, we saw Manchester City absolutely destroy Arsenal 5-0 at the Etihad. Ilke Gundogan, Gabriel Jesus, Rodri and a brace from Ferran Torres were all on the score sheet as City properly put Arsenal to the sword here, heaping more doom and gloom onto Mikel Arteta and the Gunners as a whole. Things went from bad to worse for Arsenal when they were 2-0 down when Granit Xhaka decided to have a Granit Xhaka moment. He got sent off at the time uh, of Arsenal being two goals down for a bad challenge on Jao Cancelo. And if things weren't already over for the Gunners at that point, they certainly were after the Swiss midfielder had got sent off. City went on to dominate the game entirely. They dominated the entire game, but they had dominated it even more from that point on, without really shifting out of second gear, uh, it became almost like a training ground session for City, for Pep Guardiola's side, and Arsenal's poor and shocking defensive display was evident for all to see, which only, of course, helped City's cause. And in all honesty, Arsenal were pretty lucky that it was only five goals that they conceded and not any more. Elsewhere in the Premier League yesterday, Everton continued their unbeaten start under Rafa Benitez with a 2-0 victory over Brighton. Although there was a moment between Tom, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richarlison as they argued over who should take the penalty in that game. Calvert-Lewin was the one who took it in the end and he actually did go on to convert from 12 yards, so fair play. Brentford also continued their unbeaten start to life in the Premier League following Ivan Tony's first Premier League goal, which helped them to a 1-1 draw with Aston Villa. James Ward-Prowse scored a penalty deep into injury time to rescue a point for Southampton against Newcastle. And Leicester got back to winning ways with a 2-1 win over Norwich. And finally... Crystal Palace fought back twice to earn a point against West Ham as the game finished 2-2 at the London Stadium. Today's games will see Leeds travel to Burnley. Tottenham will look to make it three wins from three when they face Watford. And Wolves will clash against Manchester United, who will of course be buzzing and uplifted with the news of the return of the one Cristiano Ronaldo to Old Trafford. Also in the news, the England squad has been announced for the upcoming World Cup qualifiers against Hungary, Andorra and Poland within the next couple of weeks as the international break once again looms over football. The 25-man squad is pretty much as you were from the Euros this past summer with a few exceptions. Aaron Ramsdale drops out as Nick Pope makes his return. Trent Alexander-Arnold is back in the fold as well. So too is Jesse Lingard. And Patrick Bamford has also been brought into the squad as well. England, we know that England should be winning these games. We know that qualifying for next, next year's World Cup in Qatar should be a formality. 
I just wonder if everybody that was going as crazy and as mental this past summer over England doing well in the Euros will keep up with that same energy when England go into these qualifying games or whether it's just a, a major tournament kind of thing. We're waiting to see. Next, we move on to Leicester, West Ham, Celtic and Rangers who have all been drawn out of the hat for their Europa League group stages draw. Leicester will play Napoli, Spartak Moscow and Legio Warsaw in Group C. Whilst West Ham were drawn in Group H against Dynamo Zagreb, who of course famously knocked out Tottenham last season in this competition. Genk and Rapid Vienna. Steven Gerrard's Rangers were drawn against French side Lyon as well as Sparta Prague and Bromby. While Celtic are drawn into Group G, which consists of Bayer Leverkusen, Real Betis and Ferran Varos. Meanwhile, in the Europa Conference League, that draw also happened as well, featuring Tottenham. They drew Rennes, Vitesse and Moura in Group G. Anyone for a Tottenham-Roma final in this competition this season to see Mourinho return to haunt Tottenham? Just a thought. And finally, yes, I know this is old news, but I wanted to talk about it. We're talking about Kylian Mbappe. Real Madrid have come back with an improved offer for the French superstar. Somewhere in the region of 170 million euros is what they have offered PSG. They've already had one bid rejected by the French club and Madrid have since now returned with an improved offer. Mbappe made it clear to PSG that he wanted to leave the club this summer and PSG are seemingly prepared to let him go if the money is right. But reports coming out today have stated that the Spanish club have told PSG that if a deal cannot be sorted out within the next 24 hours or so, they are pulling out of negotiations and will attempt to sign him on a pre-contract agreement for next summer obviously when that time gap is allowed remember the 22 year old is entering the final year of his contract with psg and therefore means that when january comes around he will be able to hold talks with any club that he wants over a pre-contract agreement for them to sign him on a free transfer when of course his current contract does go on to expire at the end of this season this transfer window has already been one of the most exciting yet completely mad and bizarre windows that I can remember maybe even ever to ever be in transfer window history. You know, you've already got the likes of Messi and Ronaldo straight off the bat as being on the top of the list of the biggest transfers that already happened this summer. But Mbappe could be up there too if Madrid and PSG can uh, materialise and sort out a move for the French superstar in the final days. But we wait and see what the future holds for one Kylian Mbappe. But as I always say, these are just the thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, of this guy. I want to know what you guys think. What do you make of any of the news stories that I've talked about within this video? What do you make of Kurt Zuma finally completing his move to West Ham? What do you make of William going back to Brazil to Corinthians? What do you make of yesterday's Premier League action? What do you make of the England squad for the upcoming World Cup qualifiers? What do you make of the Europa League and Europa Conference League group stages in them competitions? And what do you make of the whole Kylian Mbappe saga? Will a move be found for him? Will PSG and Real Madrid come up with a, a, a deal for him in the final days of this transfer window? Let me know your thoughts, comments, opinions, predictions, whatever you want to call it, on any of these news stories that I've talked about in this video, because I'm sure they'll all make me interesting reading. Otherwise, hit that like button on the way up, enjoy the video, subscribe if you're new, or want to see more content like this, both things always and forever greatly appreciated. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening. I've been Fletch, this has been another Fletch Talks video, and I will see you in with you all again soon in another video.